we focus on health and flavor in our store. So there is a misconception that a, a healthy meal will not have any flavor. And we said, no, it is not true. That is not true. It is not true. You can create a healthy meal and yet flavor it up according to the flavor pairing that we will tell you in the store. Welcome to the 100 Year Lifestyle Podcast, dedicated to you and your loved ones living at 100% for 100 years and beyond. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Plasker. Welcome everybody to the 100 Year Lifestyle Podcast. Yes, we are transforming health and longevity worldwide so that you and your loved ones can live at 100% for 100 years and beyond. And I've got a good friend with me today that's going to help us do it because he is the olive oil sommelier. I know you probably didn't even know that existed. We're going to talk about that. My good friend, Dilip Daya, thank you for being here, my man. Thank you for having me here, Dr. Pascal. It's fun. So uh, so you met Smitta, Dilip's wife. She's a Ayurvedic chef because you probably listened to her podcast. It was awesome. If you haven't, go back and listen to it. And Dilip, when I met Dilip, he blew my mind because... He is an olive oil sommelier, and we're going to talk the ins and outs of olive oil, good olive oil, bad olive oil, flavored olive oil, the process, all of that stuff. Probably just if you like olive oil and you like to cook, you like to drizzle olive oil on your salads and dip in it, etc. this is going to be a meaningful uh, time for you. So, Dilip, how did you get so passionate about olive oil? Just a little bit of digression on the olive oil side. I grew up in Mozambique, Southern East Africa, and uh, we speak Portuguese, and I grew up eating Portuguese olive oil. And that's what got me interested into very much. Uh, I'm also a chemist, industrial chemist, uh, a perfumer. Uh, that's what I studied, and I worked in the lab laboratory. And also, since then, I moved into... Uh, uh, mean, mean, uh, my career into the computer industry. But then because of Smita and the Ayurvedic chefing and the olive oil, uh, that brought me back into it as uh, talking about olive oil, uh, meaning growing olives and so forth. But that came because of the Calamai family, meaning Antonio Calamai, meaning Orlando Calamai and Luca Calamai. They, they live in Florence. We share good um, knowledge with them. Uh, they are the ones that really taught me about the olive oil growing, the process, the chemistry behind olive oil, the healthy benefits, and so forth for the last 20, 30 years. Yeah, so he said, uh, Antonio, we call him Dr. Tony. He's a, a colleague yes. of mine. We've talked about him on other podcasts too, Dr. Tony. And yes. I gave him an adjustment when we were in Italy. We became fast friends. and But you knew him his whole life, and you told me a story because – Dr. Tony's dad, Luca, recently passed, sadly, so we send our thoughts and prayers out to Dr. Tony. We're thinking of you as we give this podcast, but his passion and his desire to teach you and to, for you to follow him around changed your life. What it has, uh, and the reason being is uh, they used to be here, uh, the Kalamai family used to be here in East Cobb, Marietta, almost 30 years ago. They built a house next door to us. And my dad was around at that time too. And my dad speaks fluent Portuguese. Orlando speaks Italian. They used to communicate. And, and so the, the relationship grew such that, that Orlando Calamai took me in as a second son or as a third son. Or, well, I would say he was my godfather. And, and I used to look up to him from the knowledge perspective and also you know, meaning go on from that. And we've had relationships on the farm. We used to go there, we used to visit. And that's how the relationship about the olives, the growing of olives, harvesting of olives grew very, very much. You know, they talk, there's a lot of talk about the Middle Eastern diet because of olive oil and the Correct. types of foods that are eaten. And olive oil, obviously very good for your heart, very good for your blood, very good for your immune system in so many ways. And and so, but that's not always true the way that we receive olive oil today. And you learned becoming an olive oil sommelier. And I, I don't think a lot of people even know that that exists, that you can become an olive oil sommelier. Talk about what is, what is an olive oil sommelier? An, an olive oil sommelier would be very, there are very close similarities to a wine sommelier. It's basically a sensory perception of olive oil, as in um, taste and flavor, and, and a lot of 
I would say general public may not be aware, there is a different, distinct difference between taste and flavor. Or you've asked the audience, do you know what's the difference between taste and flavor? And, you know, really to actually cut it short, the, the taste comes from your tongue, your taste buds. Your tongue can only taste or detect five things, sweet, salty, bitter, sour, and umami. Umami is a savory word. It's a Japanese word. The other aspect of it as to when we say flavor, the flavor is aromatic, it's from your nose. So the combination of your, of your nose to your smell and your taste, that combine interchangeable words of tasting and smelling, right? So when you, uh, a quick analogy would be, everyday item would be coffee. Why is it when you pass a coffee store and you said, you smell coffee and you say, I love coffee. But as soon as you drink coffee, it's bitter, right? So it's the bitterness comes from your tongue because you just tasted it, but the smell of it, that's what the combination of, you know, I meaning all that. And likewise, uh, same thing with, with olive oil as well. So when you say taste and flavor with olive oil, there's a lot that goes into the taste and flavor. There's the, I would guess the, how it's grown, the environment, the, right. the type of tree that it is, the moisture in the air, and talk about the different regions maybe of uh, how that affects olive oil, the taste and flavor. And, and then we should talk about the processing too, but let's start with the different regions of olive oil. I love Italian olive oil. I love right. Greek olive oil. I really love quality olive oil of all right. kinds. Talk about So the, the growing regions is uh, basically following Mediterranean type of climates. If you follow the globe and you follow uh, latitudes of 35 to 45 northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere, wherever the land falls, uh, you'll find uh, Mediterranean climate in the US would be west coast, California, central, a little bit maybe uh, southern parts of Texas, the southern parts of Georgia, maybe Mediterranean climate around the Mediterranean Sea. Okay. So those are the areas and those are the wine growing regions and the wine growing regions will also have olive oil, right? They grow side by side. You were talking about climatic conditions and so forth. They are cataloged over 2000 types of olives, indigenous to every country, right? Every uh, Mediterranean type of climatic uh, sort of meaning a, a, a conditions. Spain is about four to 500 olive cultivars. Italy has about 350 to, to 400, depending on which regions they are. And also some of these cultivars are then taken to Southern America, like Chile, and then grown there as well. So the farmer decides whether he wants similarity to wine. Wine would be sweet, medium, dry. Olive oil would be having a similar concept of delicate, medium, and robust. The delicate would be smooth and buttery. The robust would be green, grassy, herbaceous, olivey, peppery, with a little bit of pungency in your throat. Those are healthy properties. The consumers have been accustomed to what's sold in the grocery store, which is very delicate and mild. When they taste the olive oils that we've got, which are robust, which we'd call the most healthiest olive oil, that does not mean that the delicate ones are not healthy, but it depends on the polyphenol counts. And according to the IOC, the International Olive Oil Council, you got to have at least to create, have a healthy benefit of it, at least about 350 ppm parts per million of polyphenols in them for you to get the health benefits that you mentioned earlier. And the robust olive oils have more polyphenols? More, correct. They have about 700, 800. It could go up to 1,000. We've had a couple of years ago about 800. It was bitter, but it's the healthiest olive oil. I like that olive oil. I do. Right. I like to dip it. I like to right. sprinkle it and spray it. In fact, my family teases me that I like a little hummus with my olive oil instead of a yeah. little olive oil with my hummus. Right. And so, so you have these three styles of olive oil. Right. And then what... I guess you have learned through the processing of the olives. You had mentioned to me before we got on the air that there are some processes that are very important that make olive oils healthier 
than other processes. I guess maybe it's the speed or the way that it's right. manufactured. And right. So uh, part of making the olive oil is the olives have to be harvested in Northern Hemisphere. The olives are harvested uh, between October to December, right? Southern Hemisphere between April to July, right? So the farmer decides that he wants a robust olive oil or a delicate olive oil. If you, um, if you do early harvest, it will be more green. It will be late harvest, it will be more ripened. The more ripened will be less green from a taste and flavor perspective. So you can see the difference in the color as well as the taste as well as the smell. The smell, the taste, the color, no. Do not use the color of olive oil and in the quality. So the color of olive oil does not play an attribute in the quality of olive oil. So when we judge olive oils, we use a cobalt dark blue cup to actually sort of do the sensory analysis of it. So any color of olive oil that you put in, you will not see it because uh, it will always be blue. Like we've had some consumers come in that I need a dark green olive oil. Well, that's a misconception. Do not look at color of olive oil. Cool. There are some olives, as soon as you harvest it and crush it, they will be very light green and some very dark green. So do not look at olive oil color at all. Interesting. Thanks for that little tidbit of information. And then, so you process it, they take it through this processing. And we went, when we were in Italy in Puglia, we went to a couple of olive oil farms. We had the best time. And that's where we really got exposed to olive oil, right. the way we learned about it. And we went to a plant, we watched them, we watched the olives go through this process and they actually put the olive oil right from the harvest into the, the can or the bottle that we right. ended up taking with us, which was really kind of fun. You had talked about how important it is to, if there's the seeds or the, the if it's unfiltered, Right. Talk about that because I think right. that's really important and interesting. Right. So once, so I'll do a quick description of how olives are harvested. When olives are harvested, when, whichever time period that the uh, farmer sort of decide, early harvest, middle, or late harvest, once they're harvested, they have to be crushed within the same day, earliest as possible. So that's mm -hmm. why in Europe you'll see corporate farming where, where the farmers are, you will always have a mill press, an olive mill press very close by within a mile. So it can be taken and meaning driven there and pressed. So when olives are harvested, you've got to make sure they are not soiled. Uh, they are not lack of oxygen. They are put in crates with holes in them and they are driven to the mill press. And once they are uh, at the mill press, they are washed, all right? Um, they filtered off with all the leaves, and then they are dried in a conveyor belt up to a point where they go to a mechanical crusher. They, and the mechanical crusher will take the whole olive, the, uh, like the skin, the, the, the actual pits and everything in it. And then they would crush it. And it will go through a malaxer, a malaxation period of 45 minutes. And that period is very important in trying to um, extract the olive oil in it. And that period of 45 minutes, or it could be 20 minutes, will decide the quality of olive oil. After that malaxation period, that pulp with the olive oil is sent to a centrifuge system where it separates out the oil and water. The water is discarded and the oil is then taken into a large tank. Prior to the large tank, you can, they ask the farmer or whoever's olives they are is, do you want filtered olive oil or unfiltered olive oil? So they're both good olive oil or very healthy olive oil. The difference between unfiltered and filtered is filtered would be translucent. It will not be clear. And it has to be consumed in a very short period of time. And the reason why is if it is not filtered, the green particles from the olives, uh, the twigs, the leaves, and so forth, they're very healthy. It's got higher polyphenol content in it. And if you go to biology, um, I mean, like in school, they taught you about photosynthesis. The byproduct of photosynthesis 
is oxygen, and oxygen is the enemy of olive oil. So if you have an unfiltered olive oil and you leave it outside over a period of time, over a couple of weeks, it will oxidize your olive oil, even though it's still sealed, right? So it's good to consume this type under unfiltered olive oil if you're close to a farm and you can consume it quickly, right? So that's why you filter it. You still do not lose any of the healthy properties and you have longevity of shelf life up to 18 months to two years. Gotcha. We were in, uh, I think it was Florence, actually. We were at a restaurant and Lisa was very persistent because the olive oil they were having, they had put it on the table. It just came off the family farm right. and it was unfiltered. Right. It was beautiful. And Lisa was really persistent. She said, I want, I want a bottle of that. And they said, no, we won't sell it to you. That's just for the restaurant. Correct. Well, she got her way and we ended up taking that bottle home. And that's where we learned, kind of like what you're saying, we learned the saying, old wine, new oil, that you want to eat that oil quickly. Yeah, very good. And so uh, so now you, what's really interesting that I find is now I go into your store, Ole Oliva, and there's so many flavors of olive oil. So, I mean, Dilip says he's an olive oil sommelier. I think he's a mad scientist personally, because he just is into all of this stuff and the chemistry of the olive oil and the flavors. And you have some of the most amazing flavors. We give them out as samples to a lot of our practice members here. And uh, we see people sampling in your store all the time. And, and a lot of our patients say, well, I like the Tuscan one, and I like the herb one, and I like the blood orange one. How is that made? Like, how do you do right. that and not compromise the quality of the oil and the health right. of the oil? Because that's, I think, really important that people understand how that works. Right. So before I even talk about the flavoring of olive oil, I'll talk about the science behind it as in why there's so many flavors. When a lot of the times the consumers come into the store and they say, well, I'm overwhelmed. Where do I start? So... As my background, I've also studied food science, as in food pairing. So similar to wine and food pairing. Similarly, there are certain flavors that would go with certain foods. So with that said, how do you flavor the olive oils? So there are three methods to flavor the olive oil dependent on what the flavorant is going to be and what form that flavorant is going to be. It's either powder or it's either leaf or it's either herbs or whole products, many example, it can be garlic, it can be a, like a basil leaf, it could be quite a few herbs. So you say, do you use a Tuscan herb? So the herbs are then infused or crushed together with the olives and then extracted into the olive oil, right? So that's fused. Infused would be, if you take a basil leaf, the basil leaf is very delicate. How do you extract the aromas out of it? So the base, large quantities of basil leaves are steeped into the olive oil for four to six weeks and then decanted after six weeks. So just, just decanted, that's it. And that's how the flavor comes in. And there's also uh, citrus products like blood orange, uh, Persian lime, uh, Maya lemon, any of the citrus products, they are naturally flavored. That's what the terminology called the naturally flavored. The flavorance that comes from the zest and not the orange. So you cannot take an orange and an olive and put it together and crush it. You're going to get orange juice. You don't want the orange juice. The juice is just regular water liquid. You don't want that. You want the oil. The oil comes from the zest. So the zest is then steeped into the olive oil, and that's how you would get the naturally flavored. And then you also have, when I mention powder, so we have smoked hickory. We have tandoori, which is a spices. So the spices can be steeped into the olive oil and then stirred over six period, oh, I mean over a six week period, and that's how the the flavorants through the osmosis process, the flavors gets extracted into the olive oil. It's amazing. It's a natural process. There's none, there's no additives in it. So the ingredient is just an olive. That's it. And, and they are natural, uh, meaning natural flavors yeah. from the natural products itself. It's good. You know, once people start to expand their horizons as it relates to olive oil, it really changes, I think, their perception of 
the meals that they have and they just, they become more of a foodie type person and they become more, uh, I guess their palates become more sensitive and more astute right. as to what they're tasting. And it changes people. I've heard people that they have the same meals that they've always had and they just change the olive oil that they use and it. It's like a whole different meal for right. them. Yeah. So to expound on that would be is we focus on health and flavor in our store. So there is a misconception that a, a healthy meal will not have any flavor. And we said, no, it is not true. That is not true. It is not true. You can create a healthy meal and yet flavor it up according to the flavor pairing that we will tell you in the store. Uh, that said, the other side of it is also not just olive oil. We also carry balsamic vinegars from Modena. They're all Italian. They are flavored and unflavored. And that's where the pairing comes in. When I say pairing, I meant food pairing with an olive oil and a balsamic to go with it, right? These balsamics come from two Italian grapes, a Tribbiano white grape and a Lambrusco dark grape. So we have a vinegar from them and as well as the aged glaze from them. And those two products, um, glazes from the Tribbiano grape and the Lambrusco grape is then used to flavor um, the other the other balsamics, you know, that we have. And then we can use that, the balsamics flavored and unflavored with the unflavored olive oils and flavored olive oils and create pairings for them. And you can create pairings. So we customize pairing according to your liking, what you're going to cook tonight. Uh, if you come into the store and tell me these are the things I've got on the store, meaning on my plate, that these are the ingredients I'm going to have, I will create something for you that will be complementing that particular um, dish that you're going to have. My technique is two things. I either do complementing flavors or I do contrasting flavors. And then I give you that and you get to taste it and you said, I like it or you're coming in, coming in or you don't. It's just that simple for the yeah. consumer. Do you like it or do you don't? For well, you, obviously, there's a lot well, more there is a, Yes, there is yeah. a science behind it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's all about this. It's all about this as in flavor and taste. Right. Love that. And so uh, just talk briefly about the aged balsamics because you have some beautiful aged balsamics. What is that process like and how does it change the balsamic vinegar? Right. So there's a misconception of words of vinegar and a balsamic used interchangeably. But the process of making that is totally different. So let's start off when, when grapes are harvested, they are crushed. So you get wine must, M-U-S-T, or just wine juice, meaning grape juice, right? From that, you can create three things. You can create wine, you can create balsamic, you can create vinegar. And as I mentioned, there are three things. So if you compare the vinegar process and the balsamic process, they are different. Let's start off with the vinegar. The vinegar is a fermentation process where fermenters are put in, they will convert the natural sweetness from the grape. It will ferment that, uh, the sweetness, and will create alcohol. And then they put in natural bacterium, and the natural bacterium will convert the alcohol into acetic acid, which is basically vinegar. And they will, so the vinegar that we have is about four to five percent vinegar, and it will be like a sherry wine, wine vinegar from a Lambrusco grape. That's what we've got. We, then we also use that vinegar with flavorants in that. Right, meaning depending on other couple of flavors that we got. We got watermelon, we got cinnamon and pear, we got lambrusco curry. I like the fig. vinegar. Right. Now that's a balsamic, <laughs> right? So that's a balsamic. Right. Now coming right. to the balsamic right. process, the process of balsamic would be taking the grape must, put it in large copper containers, and heat it, uh, not boiling it over a period of time to forty percent its volume. And so that evaporates the water that's in the grape. And then you can create, and what you create is a mother load of thick, almost like molasses, right? And then that is then decanted into Slavonian oak barrels and aged up to 12 years. Now that process is simplified that I mentioned, but, but every year what they do is they would take half of it and transport it to another barrel and then another battle and they keep keep doing that well i'm i'm really glad that you know all of this stuff 
and you can make all of this so special for me and my family because when I go in, I go into the store and I, I want to taste this, let me taste this, let me taste this. Wow, I like this one, I don't like this one, and then I get what I like. And, sure. and sometimes, it, sometimes it's different than what I thought. It's, uh, it's like, wow, that's really good, and I didn't expect to like it. Correct. So what we do is there are two approaches. Either you come in and you look for a single flavor of olive oil oil or a balsamic and say, this is the flavor I want. After you select the flavor, I can also then tell you this flavor would pair would pair well with a different on the other side if it's an olive oil pairing of a balsamic and vice versa. I can do that. Or if you say if you come in and you said, "Well, this is the dish I'm going to make," then I can create pairings for you. Love that. So there are two approaches to it. Yes, and we do both approaches when yeah. we go visit you. It's Ole Oliva O L E A O L I V A dot com actually for those of you that want to order online you can do that too give a quick uh, chiropractic testimonial because uh, you've obviously oh, not yes. just become uh, a great friend but you've become a, a member of our practice and uh, it's made a big difference for you so share that well let me go back a little bit dr antonio calamai he's also a chiropractor and we know him for 30 years so a mutual friend yes a mutual friend he's in florence italy and he suggested me a couple of times over, over the last, I'd say, 20, 25 years. But I wasn't into it, all right? I did not understand it well until one day Dr. Eric Pasca walked into our store and we started talking about the synergy of what we do and what he does in 100-year lifestyle. And I started mentioning on the side just about, you know what, I've never gotten adjusted. And the other reason was that um, right next door to us, there is a clothing store. Whenever I go and fit a jacket, when they measured, they said, well, my left arm is shorter than my right arm. I said, why so? And I explained that to him. And he said, well, it is your alignment. I said, why not? And that's how I started. And because of that, I must say, um, it has helped me tremendously with posture getting me to actually think, to sit right all the time, right? And it's also helped me with movement, right? Bending down, doing squats, doing things like that, and also being, uh, being aware that I don't do any of the twists, picking up weights and twisting down, I meaning, uh, meaning doing all that. So that has helped me tremendously, I must say that. Yeah, and you, talk, you told me the other day about your energy and your workouts. Oh, yes. So I do, I do CrossFit. Um, I'd go here. At, Can I say how old you are? How old are you? I'm 62. No, you're not. You're 47. I'm 62 years old. <laughs> I'm 62, yes. Yeah, well, you look good, man. You look Thank good. You. And so do you feel, we always joke, and it's not really a joke, it's true that you're getting younger yeah. every day by sure. your lifestyle choices. So, you know, the synergy of you eat good olive oil, you eat good food, you exercise you keep your spine and nervous system working right you can literally get younger every day don't you feel younger now than you did a year or two years ago yes i do i must say this that it's all synergy between mediterranean diet or what what smita teaches is the ayurvedic way of teachings as well including body alignment so all that put together will create a healthy lifestyle and that's what you want to do is what i liked about the motto that you've got a hundred year lifestyle everybody wants to attain that and this is the best way to do it's not one thing it's not one bullet there's no silver bullet but you've got to do everything like in synergy eating exercise alignment and learn to love all those things that are good for you. Don't feel like you're missing out on anything because if you're eating this kind of quality olive oil and you're yeah. getting adjusted and you're exercising, it's not a burden after a while. It's like, man, why would I ever want to go back? So yeah. this has been fun, my friend. We've been wanting to do this for a while. I'm glad we did. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so listen, everybody, uh, Dilip Daya from... Ole Oliva, O-L-E-A-O-L-I-V-A. -E we'll put it in the podcast uh, framework and uh, dot com. So you can check them out online. If you come to uh, Marietta, Georgia, East Cobb, or anywhere near the Atlanta area, check it out or go visit them online. You can order online as well. And we just love sharing this journey with you, helping to change the world because we want everybody to live at 100% for 100 years. And when since your 100 is coming and you're going to make the call, 
call Good Olive Oil, call my friends, check them out, and uh, let us know what you think about this in the comments, because uh, there's a lot of great information here, and we're grateful for your friendship. Sure, thank you, and thank you for having me, and to the audience, uh, please come into the store, you can ask me any question, and I'll be talking to you blue in the face. Yeah, they have wine now, too, by the way. We'll get to that yes, another time. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, Dr. Eric Plaschko with my good friend here, Della, signing out. Thank you so much for joining us on the 100 Year Lifestyle Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have topics that you want us to cover, people you want us to interview, maybe you have some stories that you want to share, stories of yourself, loved ones, people in your life, we would love to hear from you and share your story. Please email us at my100 at 100yearlifestyle.com. And remember, nobody wants to get to 100 or even 50, 60, or 70 for that matter, crippled, broke, and alone. So please share the 100 Year Lifestyle, all of our podcasts, social media pages, website, with your family, friends, and coworkers so they can take this journey with you. And until next time, adjust your lifestyle. Live your best life today and every day on the road to a sensational century.